12 years ago, eight month old baby Gabriel Johnson vanished from Arizona, was never seen again. On December 27th, 2009, the search began in San Antonio. That's where Gabriel's mother admits she took him. But what she did with him is still unknown. With little evidence of what actually happened, that case remains open in Arizona. News Nation correspondent Marky Martin has the story tonight from Texas. And I got a text from her and it said, I killed him. And I didn't know what to do. You know, I pulled over to the side of the road as fast as I could. Logan McQuarrie immediately dialed his estranged girlfriend, Elizabeth Johnson. This is a recording he made of that call. Where are you? Where's Gabriel? Uh, what? Stunned, McQuarrie kept asking yes. questions, hoping for a different answer. It's nothing to tell. I told you, Logan. I told you. You made me do this. You did not hurt Gabriel. And at that point, I, you know, I was kind of freaking out. I didn't know what to do. I didn't. I didn't really want to believe it. Eventually, Gabriel's mother would change her story and say instead of killing her son, she drove him to a San Antonio park and gave him to a couple who was seeking adoption. There have been no credible leads on who that couple might be. And despite exhaustive searches, police never found Gabriel's body. And now it's 12 years later, and I'm realizing that I don't care how long it is, I just want Gabriel. Sandy Peters is Gabriel's aunt. She has spent 12 years pushing investigators, private eyes, and even online sleuths who follow the case on Facebook to action. And she has even considered taking matters into her own hands. If I could just talk to Elizabeth, Gabriel's mom, and find out the truth, no matter what it is, and swear I would never share it with anybody but Logan, I would be content with that. This is an age progression photo showing what Gabriel might look like today if he's alive. Well, I can convince you he's alive and I can convince you he's dead. Um, my gut probably says I don't think he's alive. But I hope and pray I'm wrong and that we'll find that out at some point. I think the not knowing is really what gets you. It's just. It's not knowing. You don't know where he is, if he's alive or dead, and really sucks. Especially it's been 12 years later. I want to keep keep it out there. I want to keep the hope up, and I want to say that he's still alive out there. I want him to meet my family that I have now. I want him to meet his brother and his little sister. So I hope someday that we can do that. A hope now 12 years in the making. Marky Martin, News Nation, Dallas. After the phone call you heard in that story, Elizabeth Johnson fled to Florida, where she was eventually arrested. And in December 2012, she was convicted of custodial interference and sentenced to five years in prison. But she was released in July of 2014. Now, Abel Pena is a former FBI agent, private investigator, founder of Project Absentis, and is joining us live tonight. Abel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. All right, so so we heard from Gabriel's aunt there. What do you think? Twelve years later, is Gabriel still alive? Well, it's really hard to tell. Um, it's it's been a long time, and I think there's there's still quite a bit that can be done. Um, I know the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children have received just an enormous amount of leads, um, tips that have come in. I think it's uh, incumbent upon law enforcement and, and agencies to kind of take a look at these leads uh, and, and vet them and, and um, interview some of the people that um, need to be interviewed. Um, I, I'm not, I can't, you know, I don't know the answer to that question. That's, that's a really tough question. It's been a long time. Uh, it's, you know, heart wrenching. Um, uh, 12 years ago, he, he's going to be, well, he's going to be 13 next year. So he's going to be a teenager. Um, it, it's just um, hard to imagine, um, you know, what the parents are going through, with the with the father, what the family's going through. Uh, but uh, my team was, we're going to be looking at a lot of these leads that are coming in. We hope to generate more leads uh, with uh, th this exposure. 
uh, and hope to continue to work with the family uh, to hopefully, you know, find uh, it's some evidence uh, whether he's uh, alive or, 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 or where he's at. So we just want to bring closure to the family in, in one way or the other. Absolutely. All right. I want to get back to those leads uh, in just a moment. But first, you know, let's get back to, to that phone call. We heard that recording where Gabriel's mother, Elizabeth, there says that she she killed him, that she suffocated him. But yet, you know, we fast forward and she was arrested in Florida and convicted of, I believe it was custodial interference, sentenced to five years. How does that happen if she is, we have a recording of her admitting to killing him? Yeah, um, I, I did hear the recording. Um, you know, it, you've got a question. She left Tempe, Arizona. Uh, she departed with her child. Uh, she traveled to uh, Texas, to San Antonio, Texas. Um, you know, if she had any intention of killing that child, why didn't she do it in Arizona? Uh, why did she come to Texas? Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. I think there's a lot of questions that uh, she should answer. Um, and, you know, we're, we're still examining everything, including those phone calls. Uh, also, the, um, the, the confessions that she made uh, in, while in jail. Uh, and some of the uh, statements that she made as well as to what could have happened uh, to her, her child. You know, so, okay, so let's get back now to, to the leads you mentioned that, you know, that there are still leads coming in. You're hoping that this exposure, you know, will increase that. So let's talk a little bit how a case like this is even investigated. You know, we know it's been 12 years. You know, as you say, you know, if Gabriel is still alive, which of course we hope he is, obviously he's older, he's changed. He likely doesn't even know that he's actually a missing child. That's correct. We're hopeful that, uh, you know, with the, the new photographs that we have of uh, Gabriel, that, you know, someone out there uh, sees him uh, or maybe finds something odd about maybe a family that all of a sudden uh, maybe adopted a child. Uh, there are a lot of illegal adoptions taking place daily. Uh, and, you know, we're hopeful that we can get that one break, that one call that leads us to, to locate uh, Gabriel. You know, and I want to get back to Elizabeth Johnson, you know, Gabriel's mother. You know, we talked about, you know, you're still going to to evaluate some of the confessions that she made in jail. You're still going to evaluate that recording. You know, how is it that, you know, she spends five years behind bars, you know, when she admits basically to his disappearance? Is it possible she, she may be prosecuted for something else later? Again, it's been such a long time. Um, it's possible. I think uh, new evidence has to surface mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, you know, look at it one way or the other, whether she committed uh, homicide and, and look at it, whether there's new evidence that surfaces. If it does, then uh, I know the state can probably go back and, and reopen the case and take a look at it, take a look at it as a homicide investigation. But as of yet, uh, there's just not, um, I think the, the evidence uh, in the way of, of a body uh, right. uh, I know the FBI was involved in uh, countless searches out here in San Antonio. And, you know, uh, it, it, there just has not been uh, any, any, um, that hard any way happens, of right. finding anything right now at this time. Yes. And, and Abel, you know, I don't have time left, but I just I want to ask you really quickly, if you could say something to Elizabeth Johnson, what would be your message to her, to Gabriel's mother? Well, Elizabeth, I mean, if you're hearing this, um, you know, think about it. I know it's got to be probably, probably pulling at your heart right now. Um, you know what happened to your child and just do the right thing. You know, uh, just tell us what happened. Um, feel free to give me a call. I can give you my phone number. Um, you can call anonymously 726-777-1359. Uh, feel free to give me a call and we will keep this um, you know, as anonymous, but we just, everybody would like to know what happened to Gabriel. I think more importantly, I think the family would like to know what happened to Gabriel. Just come forward and talk to us. Right. A simple message there. Tell us what happened. Abel Pena, thank you so much. We appreciate it and best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.